65.3. Here's what I found. Not every, according to one article I read, it, it's, it's a conservative um, tactic to mention only the craziest um, accusations in the dossier and say none of these have been proven. And of course the craziest things are, are the least likely to be proven. And then saying if, if none of these have been proven, then the whole dossier uh, is, can't be true. Um, but the dossier isn't just about Trump. It's also about the people around Trump, and it's also about Russia, what Russia has been up to. And a lot of the stuff about what Russia's been up to, some of the stuff, like the, which candidate Russia preferred, that has been verified you know, straight from Putin's mouth and via other ways. And there's a stuff about Carter Page, who worked on the campaign that's been verified. And uh, finally, uh, the Democrats, uh, led by Adam Schiff in, in Congress, say that other stuff from the dossier has been verified, but that it remains top secret. What so. has been verified, Rick? Uh, Carter Page's meeting with Rosneft, uh, the Russian government's, particularly Putin's, um, wishing for Trump to become president rather okay. than... Okay, that hasn't been verified. But the guy said it. Who said uh, it? Putin. Putin said that he wanted Trump to be president? Yeah, and the words came out of his mouth. In Can Russia. Can you find they had that to be for me? What? Can you find that for me? Yeah, but I mean, it was a... And that's... Okay, I didn't see that. And what exactly happened with Carter Page? I don't know, he met with the, somebody, some executive, Rosneft is what, the, the, the oil company, right? Okay. Do you know what happened with Carter Page, Rick? I'll tell you. According to the dossier, Carter Page was offered $11 billion by Rosneft, which is a Russian oil company. Did Carter Page end up with $11 billion? No. Is Carter Page under investigation? I don't know, but... He is not. But you're, what you were saying is 100% of the dossier hasn't been verified. I'm saying that's not true. Well, let me put it to you this way. Do you think if Carter Page was offered $11 billion, he would have turned it down? He doesn't no. have the $11 billion. No. He's not under investigation for it. Yeah, he hasn't the dossier committed is... any crimes. But the dossier said he met with Rosneft. The dossier said he was offered $11 billion. Do you believe that, Rick? Is there any proof of that? I don't know. Probably not. Okay, so it hasn't been verified. Yeah, but parts of that have been verified. And what other part parts of eleven of billion dollars has not? You're saying been that verified. that's the only part of the story. You're saying there's one sentence in the dossier concerning Carter Page that says Rosneft offered him eleven billion dollars, and it has not been. It has not. Been Is that verified. the only sentence about Carter Page and Rosneft in the dossier? One sentence. That's all I know of. Really? If you have something else, you can find it. I don't want we to break, break it. We got to move on. But here's the deal. What I'm saying is, you're saying 0% of the dossier has been verified. I'm there, saying are, there are things in the dossier that, for example, the dossier says things like Putin was interested in uh, American policy towards the Ukraine. Of course. You, that, you don't need a secret dossier for that. Okay. So. Because he said that, and it's probably true, does that mean the dossier is true? It, it might mean that parts of the dossier are true. Right. And, if and I verified. Say, and if I say in the dossier, Putin is interested in American interests in the Ukraine, does that mean that it's a true dossier because I state something obvious? If the dossier says stuff, if the dossier, even if it's if obvious. If the dossier says that... Putin is the president of Russia. Does that mean the dossier is true? I mean, it's true. Yeah, but like, all right, where Putin has said he wanted Trump. To, we can look it up if you want on break. We're is not that break in the now. dossier that Putin wants Trump to be president? Yes. Okay, and do you have verification for that? Yeah, there's a soundbite of Putin saying in Russia, yeah, he wanted Trump to become president. 
Okay. Maybe he was just being nice. I don't know, but let's move on. We've spent more than an hour on... Some by, by the way, if he said it in a soundbite on the news, then why does that prove the dossier is true? Why, because he said it after? Or at any time. In other words, if it's obvious, does that mean the dossier is true, that Trump's a crook? Then you're making a big... Not everything in the dossier pertains to Trump's criminality. What I'm trying to tell you is you're latching on to things in the dossier that are true because they're just like Russia is in Eurasia. Putin is the president of Russia. These are not things that warrant a, an FBI investigation of Putin a Republican Putin wanted Trump kid. to be president. Pr that, Putin that, took measures that, to, to increase the likelihood that no, Trump he would didn't. be. Prove it. We're not going to take more time. We've got to move on. We've got 42 minutes left. Okay. All right. Ahead. So I, earlier this week, I read an essay in The New Yorker about how things are, in the world are getting better, according to a lot of people. I think Steven Pinker, whoever the frick Steven Pinker is, but that because of 24-hour of news that always concentrates on crises, uh, people are left with a feeling Things are terrible and getting worse. It's like when my mom used to watch cop shows late at night. She used to watch a lot of T.J. Hooker, where William Shatner was a cop, and uh, you know, on, on those on '80s cop shows, '70s cop shows, you know, people were always getting bonked on the head by criminals. You couldn't go outside without being knocked down and having your purse stolen. And so my mom became very aware of this of, of crime. Um, and so my thesis is, based on reading this essay, is that, yeah, things are getting better, but you know, aside from the current political bullshit, um, what do you, yeah. um, but they're also getting weirder, that things are getting better because of increasing, increasingly of powerful technology. So things get better, but we have to embrace weirder and weirder, more extreme technology to the point where, you know, at some point in the next century, there will be tens of millions of people who, according to, you know, strict definitions of what it is to be human, will no longer be human because, you know, more than 30% of their information turn your torso this way information processing ability won't be done in their brains but will be done via add-ons to their brains for instance if that's your definition so things are getting better but weirder lands um, I think things are getting better if if Trump and the Republicans re remain in office because the uh, Democrats want to weaken our military and uh, they did nothing to prevent the Chinese from stealing all of our technology. All the, most of the technology that was stolen uh, was given to them by Clinton and stolen by Obama. Obama was aware of it, but he did nothing about it because it, a lot of American military technology was stolen in the past 10 years and some of it was given uh, by Clinton and so the real danger to the world is that the US will be overcome by China let me agree with you there okay so if if it is overcome by China then no things will get worse if we can Trump has recently uh, given the military the greatest budget it's ever gotten. And he has begun a trade war with uh, China. And one of the critical uh, aspects of the trade war, one of the reasons we're fighting, is because Trump wants controls placed on China to prevent them from stealing more of our technology. And uh, now you may say, how is that done? Well, when the Chinese uh, 
steel technology, they do it by working with American companies. And they, they force the American companies to give up the, their technological secrets. So one of the things that Trump is trying to do with this trade war with China is prevent the Chinese from getting into American companies and, and forcing them to give up their technology. So he doesn't really, Trump doesn't care if American companies are unable to do the kind of business they've been doing with China. Uh, so, so Trump sees the danger from China and uh, is trying to prevent it. He's also trying to prevent World War III. Well, hold, can I do China before we move on? Go ahead. All right, so I agree with you that we've been too lackadaisical about China. But I believe that, and yeah, they're stealing all our crap is, Carol had a product. I mean, you, you have something made in China, and they're, if they like it at all, they will bootleg it. Carol had a little, a cute little product, a cold pack for kids in, in, a, in fun shapes. Um, yeah, somebody knocked it off because she sent it over to China to be made because that's where you make stuff because it's so cheap over there. Um, but I think the, besides them stealing all our stuff, um, the structure of their society is a risk to us because they are building a super effective technological society. They are building literally hundreds of industrial cities. By 2025, they will have 220 cities with a population of a million or more. And what those cities do is they do technology and manufacturing. And China is offering incentives for people to move from the countryside to these big new cities. Um, they have this combination of individual enterprise now and combined with the, you know, a, 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 a semi, you know, dictatorial top-down government that gives them a lot of power to, to utilize their 1.4 billion people. And we need to get better at competing with China, not just stop China from stealing all our crap, which we should also do. Well, one of the things that Trump is doing is bringing industry back to the U.S. Um, one of the things that the uh, that we found was that companies had several trillion dollars, I believe it was three trillion dollars offshore that they were keeping from the American economy because they didn't want to be taxed on it. And one of the results of the Trump tax uh, uh, policy is that that money is coming back into the U.S. And companies are beginning to, uh, at an unprecedented rate, build more and more factories in the United States. So we're on our way. Well, that's just Another manufacturing. It's not innovation. OK, Rick. The other thing that could prevent the future from going well is that the Obama administration had really done everything they could to allow uh, Iran to thrive. It gave them $150 billion, which is uh, a lot for a country that small, and the ability to develop ICBMs. So they used that ability to uh, develop a powerful military and attempt to develop weapons that they could shoot at us. And what Trump is doing, his policy, unlike Obama's and the Democrats, is he's actually weakening the, uh, I, the Iranian economy by s very, very strong uh, sanctions. And it looks like the uh, Iran is on the verge of a complete economic collapse and possibly civil war, which is what would be good for the future of the world.
Yeah, that would be good. But what you've so, done is you've taken a general proposition and turned it into an opportunity to say Obama bad and Trump good. Well, which is like a real un short un time horizon. Unfortunately, thing. Rick, I'm not a PBS special or an article by Steven Pinker. What I am is a guy that's trying to say this is the problem with the future. The problem with the future is China and Iran and North Korea and Russia. In order to make the future a good thing, we need a president that will stand up to those four countries and crush them if possible and if necessary. Obama wasn't doing that. So I don't really care what happens 100 years from now in your opinion. My problem is we got to get past these four countries. So I have to get the people watching this show to vote Republican. Because if we do nothing and we let traitors like Obama take over, he will give Iran the nuclear bomb and he will do nothing to stand up to China when they take over the, the, the uh, China seas, when they build bases around the world for their navy. He will do nothing when Russia invades the Ukraine and puts pressure on the Baltic states. It was, uh, it was Trump that put military forces back into Poland, that did uh, NATO exercises in the Baltic states, that supplied dangerous wep weaponry to the Ukrainians fighting Russia. It was Trump that brought our fleet back into the South China Sea to oppose the Chinese. It was Trump that has launched a trade war, a dangerous trade war, just to try to stop China from stealing our technology. It was Trump who appointed Betsy DeVos, head of the Department of Education. It had nothing to do with So education has nothing to do with the future. I like Betsy DeVos, because right now the Democrats run the education in all the major cities, which are slums right now because of the Democrats. The all, really, all every major yeah, city yeah. is a slum. Every Maybe. every every major city that has been run by the Democrats, all the major cities so have, the worst, New have the worst education. The worst education. The United States uh, used to have among the best schools. The, uh, the ratings of our students. They're now we're now at the bottom because the Democrats run the schools and the education in the big cities. They run it in Chicago, where there are, more, there, where there are thousands and thousands of murders because the Democrats Not don't enforce the law. Oh yeah, nope. oh yeah. Every Over year, what time period? Every year there are thousands of murders in, in Chicago. No. Every year there are thousands of murders in How many people got murdered in, in 2017? I don't know the number, but there were more murders in Chicago than Los Angeles and New York combined. You want to look it up, Rick? If you want, yeah. I don't need. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's look it up. Well, you you must need to because you couldn't give me the actual. I don't know the actual number, Rick. Okay. Um, we both read the same article. Um, murders in Chicago hit the highest level in 2016 since 1997 at 760. They've never broken a thousand. This doesn't mean that Chicago is a fucking oasis, but. Uh, Thousands and thousands of people have never been murdered in Chicago in a single year. Okay. According to the article that I read, 39,000 people have been killed in Chicago since in the past 60 years. If you do the math, that's... 650 a year. Okay. So that it's an average of 650 a year. Now, I maintain that there were probably some years where it was 500 and somewhere it hit over 1,000. But that article showed every single year over the past 60 years. There were some years where it hit over 1,000. Nope. It All right, let's go back and check. Go, go take a look. No, I saw that it, the graph went over 1,000 some years. Nope. All right, Rose, just shut it down. You don't need to see me just sit here. Um, I just wanted to... Can you just give it a disclaimer one more time because we're seeing a bunch of naked Oh, naked. There are drawings and paintings and a couple sculptures here of people 
who forgot to wear all of their clothes. This is fine by YouTube standards because this is not for prurient interest. It's for education. It's for art. It's frickin' art. Everybody calm down. Yeah, also, you can buy these beautiful works, which are going to be... We are two guys here, Lance and I, who are both going to be probably more famous after we're dead. Um, which sucks for us while we're alive, but could be great for you if you buy Lance's paintings now, because they are going to be worth 20 times more than you pay for them as soon as Lance kicks the bucket. By 20, now let's say Lance makes it to 2051. By 2060, there will, there will be, you know, at least 20 of the paintings in this room will be worth more than $2 million. And you could pick them up now for a steal at like 15 grand, some of them less. And that's a nice rate of return. Rick, this painting that uh, we're looking at it now, uh, do you remember when it, when it first started? This drawing? The drawing started. Yeah, Lance uh, started this, I don't know, maybe two, two and a half years ago at the Palace Verdes Art Center. Is this when you had your prosthetics put back on? My what? Prosthetic arms, because there's no arms. Oh. No, I'm, I'm the right. fucking so, Venus de Milo. So let me read what it says here. Is this um, the same article we were looking no, at? No, I'm looking at other articles. Um, in 2016, over 2,800 people were shot. Well over 600 people died. Since um, 2001, between the years of 2001 and 2012, 5,000 people in Chicago were killed uh, by gunfire. I'm not disagreeing with you that Chicago's bad. 39,000 people were murdered in the past 60 years, averaging over 650 a year. Yeah. Now, it did not hit 1,000 in any of the uh, numbers that I'm finding here. No, it did But for my argument to have weight, whether it hits 650 every year, or a thousand some years is not critical. The important thing to understand is that 39,000 people have been killed under Democrat administration. Well, yeah, but it, it's, that's, yeah, it's bad. Yeah, and it's because Democrats control Chicago. But in the 60 years that the Democrats have controlled Chicago, 39,000 people have been murdered. What are the gun laws? I don't know. Well, they have gun, gun control. Laws, they have but they, pretty but, strict gun but, laws. Um, but uh, most of them were killed, obviously. All right. So we agree that Chicago's bad for getting shot in. And do we agree that it's Democrats that have run Chicago the whole 60 years? Sure. Now let's move on to the next topic. So you wanted to talk about Asia Argento? No, you wanted to talk about Lincoln and Disneyland. All right. In Disneyland, I was. This is actually something you're not going to hear anywhere. Starting in because you know here here's something. There, there's street I, noise, so I think we said a little bit too much about the dossier. Again, we did the same argument, and I think people commenting on this should mention to us whether they've heard enough about that. I'm going to. All right. Sixty-five. Oh. 65 point what five now jeez we're getting so many segments tonight all right Woo. so we have to um i think we spent a little too much time on the irs scandal and the dossier because we've done that a million times so if you feel that way in the audience please put a comment but um i want to talk about something that you're not going to find anywhere else this is actually independent very uh, independent reporting from the Rick versus Lance show. So I'm very proud of it. Um, listen to the Lincoln speech from the Disneyland Lincoln robot in the, the Hall of Presidents. 
Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm so he interrupting. He, inter he would interrupt me if I was talking about my wedding night. <laughs> he would tell me what really happened. Okay, sorry. So, um, the Lincoln animatronic robot was first revealed in 1964 at the World's Fair. And he gave a speech. And in the speech, he mentions that the respect for the law should be preached about in the seminaries. And uh, he mentions God one other place. A seminary, by the way, is a religious school. And he says that uh, he hopes that God continues to give America the strength to defend itself. And he says that um, respect for the law should be in the hearts of the, uh, roughly, in the hearts of the rich and the poor, the young and the old, the grave and the gay. Okay. And so he was using the word gay, meaning lighthearted, which was the traditional use of the word gay. All of the references to God were, were removed by Disneyland, and the, were, and the reference to the grave and the gay was removed. So um, I don't know when it was removed, but if you listen to the animatronic robot now, it's the same speech with all the references to God and religion removed. So um, now it's a known fact, it's an undisputed fact that Obama met with Disney officials, uh, with the Disney Corporation several times when he was, uh, you know, over the years. The Disney Corporation has been a very big supporter of Obama Clinton. And uh, I don't know when the speech was changed, but it goes along with my theory that um, the Disney Corporation is basically trying to convince our kids to be socialists. And, and uh, they, um, they recently got rid of the, uh, there was a, an auction of uh, girls on the pirate ride. So when the pirates take over the town, they auction off the girls to be brides. Okay? The wenches. The wenches, yeah. And so um, Disney changed that so that there, the women, there's only one woman and she's actually the leader of the pirates. So Disney's changed history on the pirate ride because as you know, or at least I hope you know, most women were not heads of pirates or most pirates did not have female captains. And the other thing is that um, Lincoln's, as I say, I don't know why the Disney Corporation would remove all references to religion and why Disney couldn't have simply left uh, the words the, the grave and the gay should believe in American law. I mean, I think that People are sophisticated enough to know the difference between the 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 uh, meaning of the word "gay" in previous eras. So it just it's it's sick to me. Um, if they don't want to use a speech where Lincoln calls upon God to continue to give America protection, then don't use that speech. But don't take it out of a speech that you've already given the. Uh, the animatronic robot to say. So that's all I have to say. All right. As somebody who worked indirectly for the Disney Corporation for nearly 12 years, um, I gotta say that uh, Disney likes to present its customers with smooth and not unduly disturbing entertainment experiences. Disney also likes to make a shitload of money. Um, I could see where most of these changes would just be part of um, not wanting to ruffle anybody's feathers. 
and sure, maybe they have a, a, a social. You like to claim that Disney's trying to turn America's kids gay, right? I think that they want America's kids to be comfortable with homosexuality. Okay, so I, I don't disagree with. I mean, Disney does have, uh, you know, a significant, you know, number of, of gay employees and both gay employees and non-gay employees at Disneyland, I would think the majority of employees at Disneyland, yeah, want people to be accepting of, uh, of, of homosexuality. So I don't think we have a disagreement except you think that this is insidious. Well, they're, they're, they've put an openly gay character in the past two major movies they've done. Why? Uh, because, I don't know, gay people are part of the American and human landscape. Okay. Well, see, my, my argument has always been this. Gay people are part of the American landscape, but it shouldn't be necessary for a company that makes films for children to describe the, or emphasize the sexual character of the people in their movies. In other words, what, who people are having sex with shouldn't be a focus of the film. It's not appropriate for children. Uh, but you can be gay and not be having sex with anybody. Well, there, what I'm saying is this. There are a variety of sexual behaviors and, and tastes that don't need to be in a film for children. I don't know why it's necessary. I would use the it gets better argument that you shouldn't have to get out of high school before you see yourself reflected in the culture. That in the past and still today, like a lot of people, s suffer from feeling excluded and freakish and if those people are, because of, you know, maybe sexual orientation, maybe race or gender, and if those people can see themselves reflected. I mean, uh, Crazy Rich, Rich Asians just came out, and you don't have to be Asian to celebrate a really kick-ass movie that's frickin' all Asian. Yeah, but you see, the trouble is the, the Disney Corporation has never had an interracial couple. See, their, their, their issue isn't um, uh, inclusion of, of interracial love or um, uh, their cause hasn't been to, say, prevent teenage runaways or crime against uh, children. For some reason, they've decided that their cause is going to be making homosexuality acceptable to children. Why aren't there, why isn't there cause preventing teenage runaways? Telling people that running away from home is a bad thing. Or why aren't they telling kids that dating people of other races is a good thing? Um, why, is there cause, a, why is there cause homosexuality? Modern Family has an interracial couple. Sophia Vergara and Ed from... Uh, is that a Disney uh, show? It's ABC. Well, it's but that's for, ABC. It's been on for... No, well, years. we're talking about their films and their theme parks. I'm talking about specifically Disney, not ABC. Oh, Platts, can you give a, just a, a brief... Uh, to give context, in terms of how Disney became about, and tell us a little something about the founder of Disney. Well, I mean, my, my point is this. This has nothing to do with homosexuality in a way, except that it's an adult subject, in my opinion. I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to take my kid to a film or a theme park that is supposed to be doing things for children and have their sexual behavior or uh, s sexual imagination excited or interest or, or dealt with by that company. If I take my kids to a party with clowns 
I don't want the clowns to make a speech about homosexuality or any sexual behavior or taste. Wait, do the gay characters in the Disney movies make speeches about homosexuality? Well, apparently the new one... Um, what movie are we talking about? The Jungle Book. The, um, the new character is supposed to be flamboyantly homosexual. Um, the last movie they did, there was a gay flirtation. Uh, Star Wars, when they took it over, they introduced a huge lesbian element and bisexual element. Wait. The last Star Wars. Who's, who's, who are the lesbians? I, I don't know. I didn't see the movie. I've but seen, I've, I've seen did you see the last Star Wars? There's supposed yeah. to be a big lesbian bisexual element going on in it. I, uh, look, I'm Maybe I, I, I get sleepy. I've read, I've read like five articles about it, and lesbianism and bisexuality were not part of the Star Wars saga Oops. until Disney bought it. Sexuality's not a big part. There was like one kiss between uh, uh, frickin' Luke and uh, Leia, and then they found out they were brother and sister. Yeah, I'm saying that... Disney introduced... Yeah, but there still aren't people making out. It's not about that stuff. And yeah, but... If, but, if but, people are seeing co subtexts... No, no, there, there was open bisexuality in the last Star Wars film that was not there before Disney bought the franchise. I don't know. Maybe I slept through it. I, 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 I assure you. Do you want to... Do we have to look it up, Rick? Uh, I, but the, the press... Can you take my word for it? Well, uh, here's, the, here's my argument with... I'll take your word for it just to move on. Um, many, many gay people and straight people. I knew I was straight um, when I was like eight or nine. If you want to move on, we can't go back to your childhood, Rick. Well, all right. But like a lot of people, some people don't figure out what they are in terms of, of sexual preference, you know, until later in life. But the vast majority of people know whether they're straight or gay or something in between, by the time they're 10 or 12. It, and it doesn't mean, and most people aren't going to act on it, but it doesn't mean that sexual orientation isn't, the, isn't part of the lives of people who are still too young to reasonably have sex. And it's not unreasonable to present characters who you know, will grow up to possibly have homosexual relationships. And you don't have to, not everybody has to make a speech about, you know, how some people are straight and some people are gay in the middle of a Disney movie, but I don't think they do that. 